Do you believe you are winning the war against Absolutely. insecurity, whether it's Absolutely. Boko Haram, whether it is the terrorists in the Northwest, whether it is separatists in the Southeast? Do you believe that you are winning the multiple wars you are fighting? On I can wars? assure you that we are, irrespective of what the media thinks. I can assure you that we are wholeheartedly winning this war. And the figures are there to prove it. Well, this is why I sort of put on my glasses, because I wanted to look at data and I didn't want to make a mistake. The 2019 Global Terrorism Index, which is sort of a respected way of measuring uh, terrorism across the globe, says Nigeria is the third most dangerous country for terrorism. And that has seen no improvement since 2017. Suggesting that your assessment that you're winning the war is not acceptable by people who measure these things. I can't question what siastic they used to arrive at this kind of uh, a conclusion, but I can tell you I'm on ground here. You so know? what is the yardstick you are using to conclude that you are winning the war? Tell us. Once we, we are able to get our people back to their homes, once people are being able to get back to their farms, once children are being able to go back to their schools, those are signs to tell you that, yes, there are some measures of successes that have been measured, I mean, have been achieved in this war against mm -hmm. uh, all forms of criminality in this country. That is what we used to measure, not somebody sitting down elsewhere in another country and going on the internet and drawing up figures. No. We, we, we these won't measures allow that. that you talk about, I yeah. mean, I've just come back. Um, as part of putting this program together mm. from a tour of my state, mm. which is Lampara. And I can assure you that people are not back in their farms. Schools well, I can also assure you that uh, only recently the UNDP rep mm. made a very, very firm statement in the Northeast mm. where it commended the armed forces and the governor of... Uh, of so the fight uh, against Bono Boko Haram no, is Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can assure you that they've commended the armed forces and the government of Bono State that a lot of people have been able to go back to their settlements. That's not a small feat. Uh, just some few days ago, the spokesperson of the Kaduna State government came on board and stated that uh, over 50 bandits were killed, mm -hmm. you know, in operations, uh, coordinated operations between the Army, Navy, and uh, even the Air Force. So uh, a lot has been done. So, uh, about uh, three weeks ago, too, uh, we have seen where in Kankara local government, about 34 bandits were, were eliminated. Uh, so a lot of efforts are being put in place. So uh, if a lot of work mm. is being done and you are recording successes, you know, like you've listed, and we still have, you know, large swathes of this country facing insecurity, does that not speak to the sort of the scale of the problem and how bad it is? Um, would that be right in saying we seem to be at war across this country, not just in the Northeast? I, I think uh, you, 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 you seem to, from your question, mm. obviously you, you seem to think the, the armed forces is the only solution to some of these problems. Uh, no, no, but, no. I am speaking to know, a member of the armed forces. So yes. I assume you cannot talk about things outside Thank you. your I, I'm, I'm happy your you know that. You know, so uh, that's why my questions are limited approach, to what the armed the forces are doing. to this security situation is very, very obvious. Everybody has to be involved. Members of the media themselves too have to begin to realize that they are part and parcel of the solution to this problem. You understand? It's only when we begin to realize that that we will know that it goes beyond kinetic uh, operations in, in themselves. Mm -hmm. You know. So I don't think uh, you don't you just don't look at the armed forces and believe that yes, these are the people that will finally solve this problem for us and will move forward. Uh, 20 officers dead, four crashes, you know, um, within sort of six months or so is quite a high number. Are there issues around maintenance of aircraft and training of personnel in addition to the threats from... When you are fighting an insurgency like the one we are facing right now, mm. the tendency is that your air operations are increased. You fly more. When you fly more and you train more, there is likelihood of what we call what uh, likely accidents. 
So that could have been that, that could have been up, of course. On the of yes, doing, it's right? normal everywhere, even in developed countries. Uh, even in developed countries, you can go and find out. Mm. The U.S. is not fighting any war at the moment on its on its on its land. Find out how many plane crashes they have in a year. In fact, between 2013 to 2018, the United States of America that you know not fighting a war between these five years, mm. have had an average of 27 military crashes per annum, 2013 to 2017. But then they have more planes than you. It doesn't matter, but so. they are not fighting the war. Mm. That's the issue. Are they fighting the war in the U.S.? They are not. Mm. Training, weather, so many things can come into play when you are in this kind of operation. I'm not giving an excuse that, uh, okay, so we, we, because we are fighting this soldiers, then we'll be having crashes. But these things are likely to happen. Mm. 